This is split screen on the iPhone, bitch. What's a container? I am so not used to this. Greetings, Internet. Crazy Ken is back, and today we're going to be installing, a little bit late, Mac OS High Sierra. I wanted to do it earlier, but I got called down to Tejas, so I apologize for the delay. It, oh my gosh, the screen is filthy. Hey, hang on. You know, I've been ignoring this for too long. Thanks to iClear, cleaning is easy. Well, I think that's good enough for now. Okay, let's boot it back up. Bong. I could go for a bong right about now. Right, so like I said, we are going to be installing the new version of macOS 10.3 called Hi Sierra. And we're gonna take it for a little spin. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna split a drive so I can have a separate partition just for the developer preview to test it out and to entertain you guys. Let's get down to business. Plug her in. You open up the butter packet. That was an obscure reference. I don't know if any of you will get that, but if you get that, just let me know in the comments and I'll give you a cookie. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Hang on. <coughs> Holy shit. Oh. oh, my chest, excuse me. Oh, okay, that hurt. <laughs> All right, so that's in there. Oh gosh, that really hurt, hang on. Whoa, that burn. You ever get that? You ever like sneeze and like, it feels like your whole chest is on fire and just impaled by spikes? Okay, so let's open up Disk Utility. We'll take our sand disk here. We're gonna throw another partition on this sucker. We don't need a lot of space for this. Let's just give it like 45 gigs. And this will be APFS eventually because Apple introduced APFS in High Sierra as the new default file system, so that'll be cool. So I'm just gonna call this HS for High Sierra, mainly because I'm lazy and I only have one hand available right now, and I don't wanna type a lot. So we're gonna apply that. This partition will be added, this partition will be resized. New partitions will be erased. Let's partition. And there we go, it finished. All right, we are done there. Let's close out of this sucker. Now we're gonna open up the installer, which I don't recall them using this logo before. Um, I'm also not sure if they actually referred to this as the version number instead of the actual name, because I've installed a lot of developer previews before and I don't remember doing that. I guess I'll just have to check out the old episode and prove myself right or wrong, but knowing me, I'm going to be wrong. Yeah. So, will it continue there? Read our bedtime story, and we're going to show all discs, and we're going to throw Hi Sierra onto the disc, HS. All right, so now this is the thing I was expecting to pop up. It will give you the option to upgrade your partition to the Apple file system, which is good. I mean, it's optimized for SSDs, it's 64 bit top to bottom, it's pretty baller. So we're going to do that. Yes, we are not connected to a power source, but we are risk taking folks here. Oh, password. That means I gotta stand up and type stuff in. Okay. There we go. 29 seconds remaining until the two hours remaining indicator shows up. And we are ready to restart. All right, so we're at about 18 minutes remaining now, and then hopefully the setup is pretty simple and we can take this sucker for a little spin. Okay, just rebooted a couple times and the time indicator went away. And reboot it again. Okay, this is exciting. It's like NASCAR. Left turn, left turn, left turn. What's next? I don't know. Let's see if our time indicator comes back. And I know right when I get up, it's going to come back. So I'm just going to wait here until something happens. Because everything interesting happens when I turn away. It still shows the old Sierra logo up there. Continuity foul. 10 yards. Some sports thing. Anyway, we're going to hit agree. All right, Express setup. This is new. Siri helps you get things done just by asking. You can send a message, dictate, allow maps. What's all right? So what's a customized setup? Oh, I see what it's doing. That's kind of cool. Let's do custom. Uh, no, let's not turn that on. I'm loving the new uh, Siri icon here. It's like one of those plasma spheres, you know, you probably used to play with when you were a kid. Yeah, that looks cool. And there we are, ladies and germs. We are in Mac OS. Hi Sierra. 
Okay, I don't know what this untitled drive is. Oh, oh it went away. Well, that was rude. <laughs> okay, well, here we are. There's Siri. Siri here. How may I help you? Oh, you, you can go away for now. Now, they said the voice sounds all new and all that stuff, but it does not sound new right now, so maybe they're working on that. That sounded just the same as it always does to me right there. And uh, here we are, Mac OS. Again, they probably haven't updated that just yet. Okay, so who wants to bet that the icon for Siri is going to change with the next release of Mac OS? Come on, place your bets now, because it already changed it once. Let's see if they change it in 10.14. And I think I already found my new feature that I love. It's the ability to control how documents open up in tabs, because sometimes they'll just open up in tabs when you really don't want them to, and it's annoying as shit. So I'm glad Apple uh, fixed that there. That's really nice. And also the slightly larger show all button up there, that, that's good. That's really beautiful. I've been wanting that for a long time. I have no idea why they changed that. It was fine before. All right, so we clearly have some new things going on with APFS here. First of all, the Disk Utility app got tweaked a little bit, and we have some nice large storage indicators up there. That's pretty cool. But now, this is different. Um, shared by four volumes. I'm not quite sure what that means. I really should read the technology briefing for APFS. I'm so behind with this new stuff. But I'm not sure what it means by shared there. And um, also, we have an add and delete button. So like if I delete it, it's like deleting HS will delete all data stored on it and cannot be undone. Well, that's probably impossible because we're actually booted off of that right now. But when you add, check this out. APFS volumes share storage space within their container. What's a container? I am so not used to this. I don't know what the difference between a reserve size and a quota size is, but it sounds awesome. This sounds cool. This is one of the new features with Apple File System. Let's read and enjoy. APFS volumes share storage space within their container. The optional reserve size ensures that the amount of storage will remain available for the volume. The optional quota size limits how much storage this volume can allocate. I don't know what any of that means, but it sounds so cool. I am such a noob at this stuff. And then we have our different APFS options as well. And also in the partition sheet, we have our format options, including the four new APFS options too. So yes, they're really pushing APFS, which I am liking. So a lot of the big changes with High Sierra are not necessarily features the user will obviously see. This is kind of like the Snow Leopard of Sierra, where it was mainly a refinement and technology-focused release. However, one thing I really want to point out, especially being a video guy, is the integration of Hevsi which is what I call it because I'm lazy, or HEVC, or High Efficiency Video Coding, or H.265, whatever the frick you want to call it. So, we are going to have a look. I'm going to open a movie file from a Final Cut document, and we're going to have a sneak peek as soon as my beach ball goes away there. <laughs> we're going to have a sneak peek at the exporting options. And see, oh, there it is. Use HEVC. So I can export as 1080p, which will probably default to H.264. But if I check this box, we will now use HEVC. And you know what? I actually want to do a comparison. Let's do a regular export without HEVC and then one with HEVC and see if we do have that file size decrease. If so, this is a big deal we can get about half the file size with the same quality. And that's huge, or small, which means less storage space has to be occupied by my videos, and my uploads to a server will go twice as fast. So that is huge. So let's save that out and have a look. And as we can see, that conversion time is taking significantly longer now, and we are running off of an external hard drive, so... But the other cool thing is Final Cut Pro and other apps are going to be adopting this, which, you know, Adobe already did with Premiere. So then for future videos, I can just export right to HEVC without having to convert later on. But the conversion option appears to be there, built right into QuickTime. Actually, I just remembered something about HEVC. My computer predates the supported models that have hardware-accelerated HEVC support. So I just thought... 
you know, when I use Final Cut Pro, which already exports really fast, as I showed in this other episode, it may take longer to export HEVC, so I'll have to gauge if it's worth it or not, depending on how long the encode times are. Because this computer is several years old. Now, if this was a newer model that supported the hardware-accelerated HEVC, then I'm imagining this would be going a lot faster. But again, this is a late 2013 MacBook Pro. You know, I'm just innocently over here watching the amazing world of Gumball at the sidelines while I'm waiting for the computer to do its thing, and this shit happens. This is this is iOS 10. Yeah, this isn't even the beta. This is this is 10. The current version, the current stable version, and uh, well, this is what you got. Years of R&D, and this still happens. I guess there is that dot update out that I've been ignoring. Hmm, maybe I shouldn't have ignored that. Oh, yeah, I can just, yeah, oh, oh, this is beautiful. This interface, this is what I like. This is split screen on the iPhone, bitch. Yeah, let's, let's, let's just watch The Incredibles. Yeah, screw this. Let's just... All right, it looks like it's almost done. Please don't fail. Please don't fail. Please don't fail. Please don't fail. There we go. <laughs> All right, so that took a long time to convert. In fact, it was probably not worth it. But again, this is older hardware and we are booted externally. So whatever, that will affect performance. But yes, the H.265 or HEVC version of the video is 35.3 megabytes. And this one is 48.8. So in this case, it definitely wasn't half, but it is still a smaller file. Hang on, we got a new development here. So I'm seeing something new here. This is the H.264 version. And this is the HEVC version. The colors look a little different. Now I did shoot this with more of a fake log C profile, so it looks more flat. But yeah, it looks like the H.265 version has a little more contrast in there. Now, I'm not sure if that was just something that QuickTime did or if that's normal for HEVC because the colors are definitely different. For me, I wouldn't like that. So, interesting development. I know this is still a bit early on, but I just wanted to test that out. That was the installation of macOS Get High Sierra with a little H.265 test. We may have some more content out in the future in regards to this release, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But this was pretty simple, pretty flawless. I'll keep fiddling around with it. And thank you for joining me on this tech video log. And I'll see you in the not-too-distant future.